Since I received a lot of requests for assembly instructions for the personal escape system that I use and the one that's shown in the videos that I posted, I'm going to take you through the entire assembly today in this video. Starting with components, the rope that I chose is Sterling Firetech 32 Technoil. It's Kevlar or Aramid fiber and the exact same rope that FDNY uses. It's 7.5 millimeter in diameter, has a strength rating of approximately 5,600 pounds and a heat rating in excess of 900 degrees Fahrenheit. The length that you're going to need is typically anywhere from 35 to 50 feet, but the length that you choose is entirely up to you. I use approximately 40 feet. The next component is the descent control device or DCD. This specifically is a CMC Escape Artist self-breaking DCD, uh, the second generation version and the one that I prefer. I also use two carabiners. These are SMC aluminum screw locks, but just like the length of the roll, the type of carabiner you choose is up to you. The first carabiner is used to attach the DCD to your escape belt or seat harness, while the second carabiner is used for anchoring and alternate rescue techniques. The last component in my system is the Crosby hook, which I use for last resort anchoring. To assemble a system, you're going to need two plastic tie wraps and two plastic extinguisher safety seals. The tools that you're going to need is one side cutter and a tape measure. The first, start, or the first part of assembly is to attach your DCD carabiner. Now, regardless of what version of escape bars you have, whether the lever, control, or brake lever is on the front face, or you have one of the newer versions where the lever is in the middle, you want to position that control lever on the left. Take the DCD carabiner, go through the eyelid, and rotate it so the gate of the carabiner is toward your body with the opening down you'll notice that this carabiner rotates through that eyelet quite easily and this can affect deployment especially if your system isn't pre-attached to your belt or harness so to prevent this I use the tie wraps you're going to take the first tie wrap from left to right and go through the opening of that eyelet back around and through the middle of the carabiner and tighten it down as much as you can Take your side cutter and trim off the excess. You're going to take the second tie wrap and go right to left through the front face of that eyelid opening. Come through the center of the carabiner. And tighten down this one. Cut off the excess. I don't know if you can see this, but in the center of the eyelet, you're basically crossing over the tie wraps, making an X. What this does is it keeps that carabiner in a fixed and neutral position and prevents it from rotating around. The next step of assembly is to run the rope through the DCD itself. Now, on the back side of the escape artist, there's a diagram that you're going to follow. And to save some time, I pre rigged one. Once you finish running the rope through the DCD, you're going to pull out enough excess so when you measure from the top of the escape artist out to the end of the rope, you're going to have 40 inches. This is going to allow you to rig the anchor end of your system. Here's where your tape measure comes into play. Coming out of the top of the 8, after you have that 40 inches pulled out, you're going to measure 12 inches from the top of the escape artist out and that's where you're going to start tying your figure eight knot. Coming out of the top of the eight, you're going to take another measurement. And when you measure to the end of the rope, you're going to want to have 20 to 21 inches. This is going to allow you to finish that figure eight with a figure eight follow through. Take the end of your rope, go through the eyelet of the Crosby now, and tighten that rope to the point where when you take another measurement from the top of the eight to the base of that Crosby hook, 
you should have three inches. This is the starting position of your quick loop. Now follow the figure eight through. Start on the outside. Coming out of the base of the figure eight knot, you're going to want to have two inches. And that's sufficient. If you're not comfortable with that and you actually want to tie an uh, overhand safety knot, you're going to need a tail six to seven inches long. If that's going to add a little bit more security to the system, feel free to do that. I just go with the two inch tail and it's what works for me and I'm comfortable with that. Before you cinch down the figure eight knot, you want to make sure that's dressed out because the dressed out knot's much stronger than the one that isn't. So you're looking for nice smooth round turns without any crossovers in the rope. Look at the front of the eight and the back. If everything looks good, you're going to tighten it, the whole knot down. Take a second measurement to confirm that the opening of your quick loop is sufficient. You're shooting four out of the top of the eight, a measurement of four inches from the top of the figure eight knot to the base of the eyelet of the Crosby. This makes the opening of the quick loop large enough to accommodate the fork end of a halligan bar or the handle of an axe. Take your second carabiner now that's used for anchoring and alternate rescue applications, go through the quick loop and bring it back with the opening down toward the base of the eight. You can use one of your extinguisher safety seals now. You're going to wrap around and you're going to secure that carabiner back away from the quick loop and the Crosby hook. And the point of this is twofold. It keeps the quick loop open, again, so you can insert the handle and axe of the fork into the handling bar. Because the last thing you want to do is insert a tool through the opening of the carabiner. It's not nearly as strong. You want to place it through the quick loop. So it keeps the carabiner out of the way of the quick loop and it also prevents the carabiner from falling back to where the Crosby is. The last thing you want to do is have that carabiner fall back and hook a thumb or finger in there when you're deploying your Crosby. So it keeps this carabiner out of the way until you need it. Once that portion is rigged, you're going to draw everything back up to the top of the escape artist. Flip it over. Now if your system isn't pre-attached to your belt, one of the concerns is this rope folding over on itself before you connect into your seat harness or escape belt. Since my system isn't pre-attached, another safety feature that you can do to prevent that is to bring the brake side of your rope down the spine of the carabiner and secure that in place as well. That prevents the rope from twisting over the top. Now both of these extinguisher safety seals break away easily during deployment, but they're strong enough to keep the system secure during storage. So now the lead end of your system is established. To finish and to complete your system, you want to establish a safety stop feature to prevent the rope from being drawn through your descent control device. The last thing you want to do is repel off the end of your rope if you deploy it from a height greater than the length of your system. With the escape artist, all you need to do is tie a barrel knot. And here's what that looks like finished. This is the end of the rope being drawn to the top of the escape artist, and as you can see, it prevents the rope from being drawn through and it will terminate your descent. To tie the safety stop feature and the barrel knot, start from the terminal end of your rope and measure up 12 inches. Now you're going to tie a barrel knot. So just make a round turn, come over again, almost like you're, you're doing an open end clove round turn, come over again, and then tuck the terminal end through. You're going to want a measurement of about five to six inches. The end of this rope should just be large enough to accommodate a firefighting glove. When you have it sized to your hand, cinch up that barrel knot, and your system's complete. How you store it is entirely up to you. 
Uh, I place mine in a plastic bag. You can place yours in a, in a Nomex bag, uh, in the pocket of your gear, however you decide. And it's simply just stuffed in. But now your system's complete. And you're ready to rock and roll.